Alright guys, so I'm going to be reviewing Flashpoint Beyond. This was a comic that was sent to me by my good friend uh, Chris, aka the Mount Vernon Kid. Uh, Chris, thank you once again. And yeah, so we're going to be reviewing... I just said it, fuck. <laughs> we're we're going to be talking about this book. Um, so for those who don't know what Flashpoint Beyond is, Flashpoint Beyond is a sequel to not just Flashpoint, but a sequel to a lot of things in the in the in what's slowly becoming the Jeff Johns-verse. That's really what it is. It's really becoming the Jeff Johns ver the Jeff verse. I'm never doing that again because it, it basically holds a lot of um, stuff that goes on with Jeff Johns' work and yeah, like it connects to it's. This is a sequel to Doomsday Clock. This is a sequel to Flashpoint. This is a sequel to the New Fifty Two. This is a sequel to a lot of stuff, and that's really it. Um, and in fact, this comic feels like it's just another chapter in what Jeff Johns is trying to do for DC Comics. Because it really just feels like it's... It's one... Seven, it's six issues, but there's a zero issue, so I'm, so I'm counting seven. It really just feels like one giant stopgap for what else is Jeff Johns building to in the next five years when he writes another book. Yep. <laughs> So let's get into it. Um, yes, I know the lighting's a little bad, but I'm still trying to figure out the uh, lighting in general for this book. I mean, not book, camera. Anyway, so for this book, um, basically for this comic, for this book, this is essentially what this comic is, is that it uh, starts with Thomas Wayne waking up after encountering Darkseid and I believe they say it's like Infinity Frontier, which doesn't make any sense because there's a contradiction of Infinity Frontier in here as well. Um, but yeah, D Thomas Wayne wakes up in the Flashpoint universe and he immediately realizes, this is not right. I need to get out of here. I need to refix the world. However, there's someone pulling the strings and trying to keep the Flashpoint universe intact, like a snow globe. That's going to come into play later. And you kind of, uh, uh, and yeah. So Thomas is trying to figure out who is tr who created the Flashpoint universe again and put him in it. And he has all the memories. It's also that um, he finds the Barry Allen of this Earth and he dies. Like he gets killed. So it's a murder mystery. And it also involves Bruce Wayne in our continuity dealing with Rip Hunt the Time Hunter, or like the uh, yeah the Rip Hunter family. And, yeah, that's it. That's the story. Um, the Flashpoint story in of itself, the main story involving Thomas Wayne, is kind of a depression fest, really. Because that's really what Flashpoint is, is one giant depression fest. Um, it's just, how much can, you know, how much can we make these characters sad? That's really what it is. Is like, how much, how much depression and sadness can we give these characters? Answer, all of it. So... For this book, um, it really kind of is for the long for a majority of this book. It's um, Bruce in the Bat Cave, like looking at some items he found that he stole from Rip Hunter, the uh, the time the Time Master, and one of Rip Hunter's family members being like, "Oh, when Rip Hunter gets here, you're gonna be mad. He's he's gonna be so mad. You're gonna wish you never showed up." And that's rinse and repeat. That's like the end of the book every chapter. Also, sidebar, I love the little jab that Johns does at the whole... Remember, um, you guys remember the 5G thing, where it was going to be the fifth generation of superheroes, and that became, like, Future State, and the ideas they were going to use for it, like, splintered into other books, and 5G never happened, and it was mainly as a way for AT&T to promote their 5G network through DC Comics when they acquired it before it went to, uh, Discovery... I remember. So yeah, there's a little dig at five at the five G network where um, Batman go it has a little note thing and it goes five G averted, and I'm like, I'm sure that's for the best. Um, yeah, there's a lot that goes on in this book, but really, as to quote Thomas Wayne, nothing matters. Like that's his his whole thing is like i'm living in a world that shouldn't exist and does not and cannot exist so nothing i do matters um there's a whole pl like he goes through that book the whole time and it and you get to the point where even you're like why does this even matter because it even ends on very little resolution like 
it's like I said, this comic is nothing more than just another chapter because how it ends is on cliffhangers, and that bothers me to no end. It's a it's a Jeff Johns book, don't so it's going to have some nice writing, but really it's starting to feel like Johns is getting too big for his own britches. Like it really does feel like he's just and I understand Jeff Johns is a one of the most pro prolific writers in in comics, not just in DC comics but in comics in general. You know, he helped, you know, um, bring Green Lantern into a mainstream audience. He did so much. He did Flashpoint. He's done all of this. But really, it's starting to feel like he's just kind of like jerking himself off at this point. Like it's really just feel like these self congratulate jerk offs, especially with this comic, where how it ends is just wait to the next chapter, which God knows how when that's going to happen because John's is so busy with his comics and his own work. So who knows? I'm not saying this is bad. It's it's just a little infu it's just a little frustrating. That's what I'm trying to say is that it's just a wee bit frustrating to read this book. Is it go cool? Yeah, it is really good. It's cool. There's even some cool moments in here, like a Flashpoint version of Two Face we get, which is kind of predictable, but we still get it. Also, uh, like, um, there's some great personal moments with Thomas Wayne in here. Like, how do you go through living in a hellscape when you know it shouldn't exist? Like, it really plays with that. So I really do like that kind of aspect to the comic where it really plays with that whole idea of what do you do when you realize the world you live in shouldn't exist and what do you do with that? So I do I so I do like there are some things in here and there are some surprising moments in here with this book. There's even a flashpoint Robin that shows up and I thought the dynamic there was really cool. But yeah, I would not rank this uh, like but at the end of the day, it's just another chapter. For, it's just another, like, it's a stopgap for what else Johns is going to do for, like, DC Comics. And that's really it. In fact, he kind of, like, contradicts other writers in here. Um, and it's starting to feel like almost Bendis level, where he's either forgetting or ignoring continuity with DC Comics. Then again, this is DC Comics and the continuity... Welcome to DC Comics, where the continuity doesn't matter. That's right, the continuity is just like voting for a third-party candidate. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, points to whoever gets that uh, reference. But yeah. So, anyway. All in all, it's decent. It's just decent. Anyway, I'd like to thank my good friend Chris for sending me this comic. And yeah, if you've read Flashpoint uh, Beyond, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of it. Other than that, hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the multiverse.